Good morning and welcome to Crossroads with George Cabot. <clears throat> Up from the grave he arose. What a wonderful hymn. This wonderful hymn was written in the 19th century by Robert Lorry. <coughs> Hi, Noel. The words are so powerful and it's a well-known Easter hymn. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day. Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, mighty triumph for his force. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. This morning, we're going to be looking at that question, can these bones live? Hi, Jamie. Continuing with the questions that God asks in the Bible. God asked the prophet Ezekiel, Man, can these bones live? And that's the question that we're going to be responding to. And so I thought this is, we're just about to enter into the season of Lent. And so, I thought this wonderful Easter hymn would be appropriate. Isn't it a wonderful song? And I'm glad you like it, Noel. Up. From the grave he arose. For our Bible reading this morning, we'll be looking at the book of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. And we'll be reading from verse 1 to about verse 15. And so I hope that you will be encouraged as we read the scriptures to understand the question can these bones live? A little bit of coffee before I speak. It's so good to have all of you come regularly to Crossroads. Today, I am um, live casting an hour later than normal, but it's normally at 8 o'clock, but I woke up late. I was watching the cricket match between India and New Zealand and I was awake the whole night, so I only went to bed at about 5 o'clock. And so I woke up very late. I'm sorry about that, but we are going to spend time with the Lord this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because of your loving kindness. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you that daylight represents opportunity, possibilities, and we thank you for your many blessings. We pray that you will encourage us, guide us, lead us, and help us to love you with all our heart. Help us, O oh Lord, to live a life that is pleasing in your sight. I'm so grateful, Lord, for our family, that you love us and you care for each member of our family. I pray, O oh Lord, for all the members of our family who have put their trust in you. And I pray that you will prosper and bless and encourage them. But there are many members in our families, Lord, who don't know you. And I pray that you will open their eyes and their ears and their hearts and their minds to encounter you, to receive you into their lives. Thank you that you love us and you care for us. Please be with us this day. Open our hearts and our minds as your Holy Spirit prepares them so that we are receptive and responsive to your word. 
But we pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Peter. Good to have you guys with us. And so we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37. The question is in verse 3. The question is, can these bones live? But we're going to understand the, the question in the context of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 to 14. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth amongst them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath in enter you and you will come to life and I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and the breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. What a wonderful, evocative passage of prophetic literature. The prophet Ezekiel was operating during the heyday of the Babylonians, the Iraqis. The Iraqis were the superpower of the world at that time. And the Babylonians conquered all nations. <clears throat> they had great cities. They built ziggurats. They built a fabulous gardens and they had wonderful artists all flocking down to the empire to express their artistic skills very much like how later on in the Greek civilization and in the Roman civilization uh, artists from around the world came and exhibited those magnificent architectural pieces and so we have this image of the period. The Babylonians were in the ascendancy. I just want to have a cup of, a sip of coffee. And the Israelites were a captive nation. They had been put into exile in Babylon. And their vitality, their morale had really sunk down to their boots. And they had no sense of hope. They were a crushed people. And they were incapable of even believing that God existed 
let alone God, could do anything for them. And there was this terrible sense of futility. And it is in this context that God sends his prophet Ezekiel to his people to encourage them, to motivate them, and to build them up in their faith. They were a slave nation. They were captives in a foreign land. Their city of Jerusalem had been razed to the ground. The temple was a piece of rubble and God was speaking to this slave nation, a people whose spirit had been crushed. And it's wonderful to see how God uses images, metaphors, gives visions and dreams, even as he communicates his eternal love, his eternal mercy, and his, his eternal commitment to his covenant, to his servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Praise the Lord. We have a God who will not abandon us. And so, as Ezekiel is taken to this desolate valley, He is shown a terrible scene, a valley full of dry bones. Clearly an army had been there at some point of time and they had been vanquished, they had been defeated and now their carcasses had rotted through and over many years their bones had become dry and white in the scorching sunlight. And that valley was a testament of a mighty victory by a foreign power. And it was supposed to conjure up images of power, might, destruction. And the prophet Ezekiel, when he's seeing this God, points to him and asks the question, Ezekiel, O son of man, my servant, can you imagine a new possibility? Can you imagine that these bones can come to life? The servant of the Lord knows that with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And he can do it. And so he wisely says to the Lord, Lord, you know, you alone know what the future holds for this valley of dry bones. God needed this servant to be surrendered, available, usable, and teachable. Do not let your environment intimidate you so that you have lost hope. As the servant of God, you are called to bring hope to a people who have no hope. Are some of you passing through this wilderness experience, this valley of dry bones? I have, not right now, but I have gone through those situations several times in my life. It's bleak and everything looks bad. But the Lord encourages us and he says, put your trust in the Lord. Son of man, can these bones live? The question that God asks of his prophet Ezekiel in chapter 37, verse 3. Son of man, can these bones live? Can you have the audacity to imagine a different 
scenario. And the prophet humbly surrenders himself to the omniscience and omnipotence of God. And he says, God, you have the power, the might, and the authority. You alone know the affairs and destinies of nations, of communities, and of people. Do you believe that God knows your situation, knows what's happening to your nation, and God cares? Is God speaking to you this morning? Is God speaking to you through his word? O oh, sons and daughters of man, do you believe that with God all things are possible? So God tells the prophet Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's the first thing you and I are called to do. We are called to pay heed and to listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. How will you come to life? When God blows or breathes his breath into your life. In Hebrew the word is ru or ruach, similar to the Urdu word ru or the Arabic word. God's breath will bring life to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life and I will attach tendons to you and make flesh upon you and cover you with skin and I will put breath in you and you will come to life. You know, my brothers and sisters, at the moment I am pastoring a church that had a great history a church where the Holy Spirit moved in power. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people came to faith at St. Paul's Darien. If you don't know about this church, Google the book Miracle at Darien. Well, after 30 odd years, the church is like a valley of dry bones. Most of the people who are left only remember the glories of the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. They look forward and move forward, but their eyes are always on the rear view mirror. And God is asking me, <clears throat> O son of man, do you believe that these people can live. This community can be renewed and revived. And this is the question that I have been grappling with over the past several years. How a super wealthy congregation, how a powerful congregation, a lively congregation where the word of God was preached and taught and mighty acts of God were demonstrated. Even dead people have come to life at, here at St. Paul's. Physically dead people. Healings galore. People used to come to St. Paul's flying from other nations because they knew and heard that the word of God was taught and the Holy Spirit was active here at St. Paul's. I come to this historic church almost 45 or 50 years after all these things happen. And I find a remnant. And I find a people who failed to trust that these dry bones could live. A crushed and broken community. And yet, God in his grace and mercy asks you and me that same question. And we can ask that, 
uh, a question of our nation here in the United States, back home in the United Kingdom or in India or whichever country you come from. Can your nation be renewed and revived by the word of God? You've got to believe it in the pit of your belly. When you look around you, you see the work of the enemy. You see the work of evil that is rampant. You see faith dying. And you see, listen to God's word. And so this morning, I pray that God will speak to you and to me. Know that God is on the throne. And so while people are calling me on the telephone, I won't answer it because I am teaching God's word. And so I pray that you will pay heed and seek God's purpose and plan for your lives. Guide and direct our paths. The work of the prophet is not an easy one, is it? He's called to bring hope into abandoned communities. He's called to speak hope where the stench of death is all around him. And here we have this incredible imagery of a valley of dried bones. But what we can learn today is that when God says, can these bones live? The answer must be, God, of course it can live, but if only you know if you want it to live. Because with you all things are possible. And so, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak to us and encourage us this morning to be more devoted to our communities because of what God has done in your life and in my life. We want to see revival in our land. We want to see churches restored. We want to see broken lives mended. We want to see hope injected in places where there is no hope. This morning as you go to work, this morning as you are in your offices working, I pray God's breath upon you. Breath of God, fall afresh on us. Renew us and revive us. Restore us and build us up that we may live as you want us to live. God calls the prophet in historical context to speak to us. And so this morning, my prayer is that like that vision of the valley of dry bones, God will infuse you with his presence, with his mighty breath, renew you, revive your hope, and restore in you a spirit that is humble, that is contrite, and that cries out to God, saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Show mercy upon my nation. Show mercy upon my congregation. Show mercy upon my family. May your presence and peace abide with us. On the 26th, we will be beginning the season of Lent, that season where we will be questioning and meditating and contemplating and that season where God wants us to grow in our love for God, in our faith, in our knowledge of God. And so I also remember that the season of Lent will culminate in that glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus, which we celebrate on Easter Day. And this wonderful hymn, Up From the Grave He Arose, 
I hope if you know it, you can join me. Great to see you, Vipin, and John Florence Mile, and all the others who have joined in. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior, Vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saint to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep its prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose. With a mighty triumph for his foes, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, <coughs> hallelujah, Christ arose. Praise God, we have a wonderful risen Savior who can overcome even death. He breathes in new life, new hope, and new possibilities. Join me this morning, even as we join our hearts together, and we pray that wonderful prayer that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. Great to have you guys join me this morning. Hi, Neeraj. I've never met you, but I know you studied in my old school. Marie, great to have you with us. For those of you who don't know me, I am an Indian missionary working in the United Kingdom and in the United States. I'm a professor and an academic. And uh, God encountered me when I graduated from school. I encountered God. And my whole world changed. And I became a convert. I changed and we chose to follow Jesus Christ. That was some 50 years ago. And today, I look back and can say with conviction, God is with me as he takes me as his ambassador to the courts of kings and queens. As I travel to more than a hundred nations around the world, proclaiming our need of God. Jesus asked the question, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I bear witness to the life-giving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And in today's message, we looked at the book of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 15. And we saw how God can renew and restore individuals, families, communities, organizations, and nations. And so my prayer is that even as you face life this week, you will experience the power of God at work in your life. For those of you who are interested to explore more about the eternal things of life, go to my YouTube channel, type in George Ibe Kabor, and you can see a whole bunch of videos that I've been posting. There are, I've got over 200 or 300 DVDs that I have yet to upload, but I will slowly, slowly. In the meanwhile, my prayer is that you will be blessed, you will become a blessing to other people, and you will live a peaceful and happy life. Goodbye, and see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.